And now, suspense. Your host is Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. In 28 plants from coast to coast, Autolite makes over 400 products, including dependable Autolite stay full batteries, horns, electric windshield wipers, relays, ignition coils, spark plug wire, and battery cable. Autolite also makes starting motors, distributors, generators, instruments and gauges, and a complete line of ignition engineered standard and resistor type spark plugs. Yes, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite and its 96,000 dealers everywhere present so fascinating in the evening paper. Oh, nothing much. Well, I better get started for the pair. It's getting late. Dave, I wish you didn't have to go. What do you mean? I mean, I wish you'd quit this job once and for all. Are you out of your mind? I've been out of my mind ever since you took this job. With all the kinds of work there are for a man to do, why did you have to pick loading explosives on a cargo ship? You know why? It's a big paycheck. Money doesn't mean that much to me. I haven't had a decent night's sleep, wondering if you're ever coming home again. Wondering if you were going to be blown to bits. Now, honey, you're driving yourself crazy over nothing. But if there's an accident... Don't Dad... worry, there won't be any accident. We've got the best loading crew in the business. So start now knocking yourself out and go to bed, huh? I'll be home at 8 o'clock in the morning. As usual. We interrupt this program to bring you a special bulletin. Authorities have now established that the Stone Island explosion, in which four men died, was definitely an act of sabotage. It is feared that the saboteurs may again strike at vital targets along the piers. And, according to one source, FBI men have already begun to move in on the waterfront area. The crow. The end? You're the last. Give me a matches. They are. Lunchbox. All right, let's take you over. You're clean. What do you think I had on me? A stick of dynamite? Hey, for all I know, maybe you got a time bomb hidden in here yourself, the way you keep playing that same tune night after night. Sounds like you've got something. Give me... Hey, what's the matter with you? Can't you take a joke? Not that kind of joke.
Hiya, Florence. Hello, Happy. Nick. Yeah? Why don't you cut it out? Cut what out? Rubbing your hands like that. You can't help it. They're all sweaty. When I think of what happened at Stone Island, it's what falls out. Okay, okay. We all know about it. Only cut it out. Don't tell me what falls. Hey, what's the matter with you guys? What do you think? Yeah. A bunch of guys are blown sky high at Stone Island. Ain't enough of them left to collect any suitcase, and he asks what's the matter. Relax, will you? Doesn't bother you a bit, huh? Sure it bothers me, but you guys are crazy to let it give you the jumps. According to the insurance company, all of us should have been dead two years ago. We're still around. Dave's right. Maybe a steeplejack or a test pilot can figure on living to be an old age. But not us. You handle nitro, you've got to figure on an accident happening any time. Yeah, an accident. That's one thing. This wasn't any accident, see? Some joker got inside Stone Island and set it off. It was sabotage, see? How do we know the same guy ain't figured on blowing us up next? Stone Island's just across the harbor from us. How do we know he won't be here tonight? Take it easy, Hap. I'm just telling him. I'm telling you to take it easy. Now sit down and relax. Huh? Okay. Hey. Hey, come here a minute, will you? Dave, this is Al Bonnard, the new replacement for Steve Harmon. Colonel Tiger sent him over. Bonnard, this is Dave Delaney, our checker. Oh, uh, yeah? Show him the ropes, will you, Dave? Get him a new locker and see he's properly equipped. Sure. This way, Al. Yeah. Thanks. All right, Bonnard. You ever handle that trouble for him? Well, no, but I... Uh, you... I've got a healthy respect for him. You should have. Married? Sure. Any kids? No. Good. Married man with kids is less apt to take chances. We got a good crew here. All the boys know that if anybody pulls a boner and she blows on us, we all go together. Crew, pair, ship, the whole waterfront. Yeah. Well, don't worry about me. If anything comes up I don't understand, I'll ask. Good. Did you bring a pair of sneakers? Yeah. Put them on. Nobody goes out in that pier unless he wears sneakers. That's a rule, understand? Sure. Good. We'll start work at midnight. Need anything else? Call me. Right. Thanks. Yeah, Dave, what happened? Who hired Bonner? Well, Colonel Tiger. What? What would you say if I told you he was a plant? A G mine? Oh, go on, Dave, you're crazy. Am I? Well, he's carrying a gold shield. I saw him drop it. Why do we change him? Yeah, now, let's not jump to any conclusions, Dave. Colonel Tiger probably sent him over as precautionary method, you know, security routine. Well, David figured after what happened at Stone Island. You think he'd assign him without telling you about it? Oh, no, I don't buy that story. If he was on outside duty, okay. But he's planted on the inside as a working member of our crew. And that can only mean one thing. Yeah, they suspect someone in our crew of sabotage, huh? No, hey, that's impossible. Is it? Well, then why didn't Tagger tell you all about Barnett? Yeah, yeah, you're right there. That makes sense. Well, look, Dave, if we got this guy on our timesheet, now, who, who could it be? Could be anybody. Yeah, that's right. But look, still I don't get it. If someone out there touches off that nitro, doesn't he blow up along with everybody else? Oh, well, he needs a time bomb. He can plant it in the cargo hold and one of the lockers in one of a hundred places. Yeah, and he could get it by Sandy out there at the gate piece by piece and assemble it in some dark corner when nobody was looking before the thing went off. Make some excuse to get off the pier. Just as simple as that. Jay. Yeah? Not a word about this to any of those men out there. Understand? working over that same number night after night. But you want to play it right, play it.
Okay, men. All right, boys, come on. Let's go to work. anything suspicious out there on that pier, use it. That new man, Barnard. Someone just slugged him. He's over there. Go get cracked. You all right, Barnard? Huh? Oh, yes. Barnard. I'm okay. Barnard. Huh? Did you see? Did you see who slugged you? Nobody slugged me. It was an accident. An accident? Yeah, I slipped on a rotten plank as I fell. I hit my head against a the piling there. You're sure it was an accident, huh? I'm sure. What else could it be? I don't know. We we thought maybe somebody was out trying to get you. I don't understand. Who would want to get me? We thought maybe you could tell us. Hmm. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. Slip, fell, hit my head. That's all there is to it. When I get back to work, you'll be talking. Hey, Dave. Dave. Yeah. What do you think? I think he's lying. He knows it wasn't any accident. He's just playing it smart. Doesn't want the word to get around. In other words, someone in our crew, Dave, the monkey Bonner's looking for, just tried to kill him. about him. He's about ready to make his move. Good. Good evening, this is Rex Marshall for Autolite. While we take a brief intermission in our suspense story, Pier 17, I'd like to show you one of our little cartoon stories. Now, this particular one concerns something that happened out in the country one day. It seems that Farmer Fred was going to take his prized porker, Susie the Sow, to the county fair. Ah, but look what happened. Fred's jalopy started jumping, and Susie started taking a beating. <laughs> yeah, Fred had all he could do to hold that bucking buggy on the road, and when he finally did look around, Wow! Ah, poor Susie had been shaken away to a shadow of her former sow. Well, 
I hope your car never gets as badly off as that regular reducing machine like Farmer Fred's. But you know, maybe it isn't operating properly. And I want to tell you that if your spark plugs aren't functioning properly, if they're old, worn out like this one, you're liable to have real trouble in the cold driving days that we're having right now and the ones that are definitely ahead of us. But you know, friends, if your spark plugs are right, you'll start quickly and more surely every time. Yep, so you see, it really pays to pay a visit to your Autolite spark plug dealer. He'll be ready to compare your spark plugs with the exclusive Autolite plug check indicator. You see, by comparing the appearance of your spark plugs with this handy indicator, you and your dealer can tell in a jiffy if they're right for the kind of driving that you do. Now, if cleaning or adjustments are necessary, he has the proved Autolite spark plug cleaner to do the job, as well as all the latest information on how to do it quickly and efficiently. If you need replacements, he'll recommend the proper type of ignition-engineered Autolite spark plug, standard or resistor, best suited to give your car smoother performance, quick starts, and gas savings. You know, all Autolite spark plugs are ignition-engineered by the same Autolite engineers who designed the coil, the battery, the distributor, the generator, and all the other important parts of the complete ignition systems which are used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars. So that's why ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs are tops in quality and tops in performance. So you take a tip from me and pay a visit to your Autolite spark plug dealer this week without fail, won't you? Simply look for this sign or just pick up your telephone and call Western Union by number and ask for operator 25. Without obligation, she'll tell you the name and location of the nearest dealer where you can get ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. I want to tell you it'll pay you to do that because from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, the second act of Pier 17, starring Paul Langton and Lawrence Fletcher. <laughs> This was over. So does everybody else, Nick. I feel like I'm walking on eggs. Six more hours. I've had a walk on eggs. <laughs> Take it easy. I keep thinking of Stone Island going up like a firecracker. All I'm for Yeah, I yeah, I know all about it. Everything going all right, Bunnin? Yeah. So far, so good. Did he tip his mitt yet? I mean, is he watching anybody in particular? No. How are the boys doing? They're all wound up. I don't blame them. Uh, okay. Keep your eyes peeled, Dave, and remember if anything happens. Somebody be mugging with the frames in the cargo hold. One of them broke and have a box full through and smash my hand. Nick, you, you sure those frames have been tampered with? I tell you, I shot myself. Somebody's trying to block the cargo. Dave, okay. okay, look after Nick, will you? I'm going down and find out. It hurts, ain't it? Hurts like the devil. Better go inside and have it taken care of. Sandy's got a first aid kit in the shack. Huh? Come on. All right, fellas, let's get back to work. Come on, let's go. Yo. Hurt my hands. Dave sent me for some first aid. Come on, hurry up, will you? This thing's killing me.
start playing the accordion. We don't want anyone to get suspicious. Set it for 15 minutes. You know where to plant it, don't you? Is you stern of this ship? Okay. Get going. Blow a sky high playing with matches around here. I just wanted a few drags to. Hey, wait a minute. I want to give you a layoff slip for the night. You ever hear of the rules, Hen? This is Dave. Don't you cry, will you? You'll find me, you'll kill me if you find that. Go on, go on, get back on the job. Nick? Hey, Nick! Dave, it's sabotage, boy, if I ever saw it. And Nick was right. He certainly was. Hey, where's Barnum? I don't know. He's around somewhere. All right. Keep your eyes peeled, Dave. Thanks. Hey, Nick. Stick around. I want to give you that layoff slip. Okay, if I got... Hang around. I'll only be a minute. Hello? Hey. Oh, hello, Martha. I'm so worried. I was just listening to the radio. They're sure now that the Stone Island accident was an inside job. Try to get some rest. There's nothing to worry about. We're Dave, doing all right sure. here. Sure. Dave, I... What's happening there? I hear music. Oh, that's just Sandy on night watch. and playing his accordion. Now, you go back to bed. I got to hang up now. We're pretty busy now. I'll, I'll call you in the morning here. I'll see you in the morning. The hand all right, Nick? It's pretty bad. I won't be able to work with it. Okay. Go on home. Better have the doctor check in the morning. Sure, What do you know, Dave? Hmm? What do you know? What? Listen to Sandy. He finally learned how to play that number. Yeah. Sounds almost too good to be Sandy. <laughs> Dave. Yeah, well. Five more minutes. That guy doesn't show up in one minute. We're getting out of here fast. How's your hand? Well, it's pretty bad. I'm going home to fix it. Well, I said, Sandy certainly did a lousy job of wrapping up. Look at that adhesive. It's all coming off, Nick. It's okay, Crandall. Did you call that okay? Well, I'm going to call the doc. He Let's go it. get Sandy to fix it up right. Come on,
panel. Come on, let's get out of here. Who are you? Where's Sam? All right, get him up. Hi. All right, let's go, Nick. What am I doing? Hey! What happened? They're still turned off the ship quick! What are you talking about? The bomb! I planted it under pile number three! It'll Come go on. up in a minute! Tell me where it is! Take over, Carter! All right, boy. Sit down. Did you know, Dave? Half tipping off. Sandy's accordion playing sounded a little bit too good all of a sudden. You should have thought of that, Nick. Well, you're a little late, Bonnet. What do you mean? Here's your boy. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? Go on. You're a G-man. Take over. <laughs> are you kidding? Whatever give you the idea I was a G-man? Hey, now, look, Bonnet. It's all over now. We can talk. I saw you drop your badge. Badge? Are <laughs> you mean this? Nah, I picked it up in the five and ten. I was taking it home to my kid. You know something, Bonnet? What? It's a good thing for this phony badge. We wouldn't have been on our toes. We might have had another Stone Island. Thanks. Regards to the kid. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, before we say good night. I want to show you a special award which Suspense has just received, but before I do that, I want to show you drivers something. You know, two types of sealed beam headlights have been used on all cars made since 1940. Both are completely sealed, so it's impossible to get inside. Now, the question you must decide is, which type of sealed beam unit do you want for your car when replacements are needed? One that will burn out the minute the lens gets cracked or broken, or the metal back Autolite bullseye seal beam, with the extra safety protection that it continues to burn even after the lens is cracked or broken. The Autolite seal beam with the exclusive bullseye lens is the newest development in night driving. It's scientifically designed to put more light on the road by concentrating the stray reflected light and adding it to the main driving beam. Yes, it'll always pay to get the Autolite bullseye seal beam unit. Because remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Ladies and gentlemen, Modern Photography Magazine has signaled suspense for its award of excellence. And in behalf of Modern Photography, it's my pleasure to present this award plaque now to our producer, director, Robert Stevens. Bob? Thank you, Rex. This is a great honor, and we all appreciate it very deeply. This is the CBS Television Network.